everyone. Welcome to another episode of Let's Learn ES6. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these, uh, so just a quick reminder, uh, Let's Learn ES6 is a little video series where I like to go over some of the new features available in ES6, uh, so you can kind of start using them today. Uh, my name is Ryan Cristiani. I work as an uh, instructor and developer at HackerU in Toronto, uh, yeah, and I like just helping you have some fun. So uh, today, if you first of all, actually, if you haven't yet, uh, head on over to uh, letslearnes6.com. Uh, I'm going to be writing a book based on the things we've been going over in these videos. Uh, so check that out. There's going to be some great updates coming soon to this. Um, I'm putting a lot of work into it now. Uh, yeah, and if you haven't already, uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Uh, you'll find it below. But there's a whole uh, a, a playlist for all these videos that we've done so far. And there's, uh, what, like nine of these? Uh, eight of these, because one of them is like the intro to the book series. So today I wanted to talk about classes. So uh, there's a lot of controversy, or I don't know, controversy opinions around classes in uh, JavaScript and their implementation in ES6. Um, I'm not going to get into that stuff. Uh, I just wanted to show you this because I wanted to try to do uh, sort of as complete of a set of feature videos as possible. So yeah, um, classes in JavaScript have been uh, kind of a, a, a thing that people have been emulating for a while now. So JavaScript isn't actually a class-based language. It's not like Java or C++ or anything like that. Uh, so people have been kind of emulating classes for quite a while. Uh, and this is probably because they come from languages where there's been classes and they just are craving that sort of feature. Uh, so in order to kind of emulate class in ES6, or sorry, in uh, JavaScript, we had to do stuff like this. We would make like a function, let's call it like uh, plane, for example. And we do like this dot wings equals two, uh, this dot speed equals a hundred or something like that, and this dot altitude, uh, dude, no, that's not how you spell it. Uh, there we go. Equals probably starts at zero, right? And then in order to create plane, so the whole idea of classes, you kind of like instantiate new classes, you create new copies of these classes. We could do something like this. So we could say like const uh, my plane equals new plane like such. And if you did like console.log my plane uh, dot let's say wings and ran that, uh, you would see there's two of them. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Um, and what we can do with this is if we kind of keep adding on to the plane, we can do something like this. We could use uh, the prototype on objects. So we could say plane.prototype uh, type here we go. Uh, dot, let's say, let's give it a method. So uh, let's give it a fly method. Uh, da, da, da. And this would maybe increase the altitude uh, rather quickly to say like 3000 uh, equals 3000, 3000, there we go. So this is how we kind of like uh, start our plane uh, class or emulation of a class and kind of keep adding to it. And like you can kind of keep going like this um, for as much as you want. And then using this prototype property, we can also uh, create uh, or extend our planes. So the idea is that we have sort of this base plane class, this base plane object, and maybe we wanna add, or we wanna create like a, a, a different class of planes, so like a jet fighter. So we can have something like this, function, uh, jet fighter, there we go, uh, and then a uh, jet fighter probably is a lot faster than a plane, so maybe we want to set the speed of that jet fighter to like a thousand. Now we notice that we haven't actually set, and actually let's put some space here so we can move around. We haven't actually set the wings or altitude for this jet fighter. That's because what we're going to do is we're going to use the plane as the prototype for this jet fighter. So if we do uh, jet fighter dot prototype, like such, uh, we can say new plane, so we, we use a new plane object to be the prototype of this uh, jet fighter. So then later on, so I'm just gonna get rid of that, we'll say const my uh, jet fighter equals new jet fighter. And if I go console.log, uh, what was it, speed, right? My jet fighter dot speed. Cool. You'll see that it's a thousand. And if I go and look at the, well, actually, let's just look at the jet fighter itself. You can see that we have the altitude and the fly method and the wings from the plane. So uh, I'm not going to get too deep into this. Uh, I do actually suggest uh, there's a book that I read a while ago. Uh, 
Nicholas Zakis's uh, Nick. Oh, uh, I hope I said Nicholas Zakis. This is uh, the principles of object-oriented programming. It's a very small book. It's from No Starch Press. Uh, really, really great, and kind of goes over. Um, sort of the idea of using uh, or programming in JavaScript as an object-oriented programming language. Really quite good. But what I wanted to show you today, so let's clear this, is I wanted to introduce the new uh, class keyword and sort of the things we can do with it. And I'm just going to show you a couple things to kind of uh, emulate or to show you the things that we've emulated before in the past. So the way the class keyword works is uh, we say class. So instead of saying like function or something like that, we can go class. And let's assume we're making like a video game. So we have like a, a character. So we probably have like a base, maybe a human character to start. And maybe we have like orcs and stuff like that. But uh, let's start with a base human character. So this is us uh, creating a, a, a new class. And this is a class declaration. You can also create classes like this. You could go like const human equals uh, class and then do something like that if you want. Uh, that would be a class expression, but uh, you probably commonly mostly see it as a declaration like this. So inside of the class, in order to add it properties, we can't actually just do like height, uh, I guess what, it, let's maybe do like centimeters. So we can do like height 185, uh, that won't work. There's a special uh, method that all classes uh, come with, and when they are instantiated, this method is run, and it's the ins uh, sorry, it's the constructor method. Uh, constructor, spelled correctly, yeah. And inside of here, you can say stuff like this dot height equals uh, 185, uh, stuff like that. The constructor method is called whenever you create a new uh, instance of a class. So let's try this. We'll go const. Uh, let's call it Ryan because I am, I guess, 185 centimeters. Uh, so we could do new uh, new human like such. And if we go console.log Ryan uh, and hit run, uh, you can see that we get the height here, 185. So this method is actually really neat. And what we can do is uh, whenever we instantiate a new version of a class, we can actually pass in parameters here if we wanted. So say we wanted to set the height. So we could do something like this, where we say we want the height to be whatever the user sets it to be. So maybe I am a little bit shorter than that, 149 centimeters. Clear that and hit run, and we can now get that. So the constructor can take uh, uh, you can pass in parameters and you can uh, set up the constructor definition to uh, have parameters in there if you want. So the neat thing about this is that we can actually uh, also have uh, methods, obviously. Um, so maybe we have like a, a walk. Well, actually, before we create the walk method, let's add some more parameters. So uh, more importantly, let's do a, like this dot location and we'll set it equal to an object. So uh, again, if we're thinking like a game, there's like an X and a Y, this will be a simple two, uh, two dimensional game, no third dimension here. And let's create a walk method. And again, I'm just gonna add some space at the bottom here. Now, uh, unlike actual uh, um, uh, objects, we don't actually have to put, and if you do, there's a syntax error, we don't put a comma between uh, our methods. We actually leave it blank. And I think this is actually something that's probably going to uh, trip you up more often than not until you get really used to this syntax if you decide to use classes. Um, so you, don't, you do not put a comma uh, after your methods. So if you're putting a list, you just kind of keep going down. Uh, so our walk maybe takes x and y, and then we can set uh, this dot location dot x doo -doo -doo, plus equals we'll just make it super simple simple here that and this dot location dot y plus equals uh, y cool so again with our human here we could do like Ryan dot walk uh, maybe 14 and 6 and then if we hit run we can see that that actually goes ahead and updates those locations uh, for us so that's really cool. Um, and so it basically works the exact same sort of as objects. We can create more methods. Uh, inside of our, our methods, the this keyword will be bound to the, the new instance of your class. So you'll notice that uh, when we said this.location, that referred to that constructor there. 
Yeah, so uh, one thing to note uh, is obviously that uh, we've created a new class here. We've created a base class, and the whole idea of sort of these class-based languages is that you can take these classes and use them as blueprints uh, for uh, other classes, other objects. So you can kind of extend these things. So let's assume that we want to make a warrior class. Uh, and we'll just start like that. So the warrior class, uh, much like our jet fighter, we want that to sort of use uh, the human class as its uh, starting point, its, its prototype, its base. So there's a new keyword called extends, where you can say warrior extends human. So the warrior class is going to inherit all of the properties from human. And if we actually go ahead and go down here and maybe I say, uh, well, let's, let's clear this out and go console.log, or we should make first const my warrior equals new warrior. And we go console.log my warrior. And we clear this and then run. We can see that our warrior, I forgot to pass in a height, but our warrior, uh, just this basic uh, declaration up here, is uh, getting all of the different features from our human class. And that's great. But maybe our warrior class, we need to, to add some new properties, uh, stuff like strength, for example. <clears throat> so uh, to set properties in our classes, we need to do that inside of the constructor, uh, or to start with, we need to do it in the constructor if you want them to be there when it's instantiated. <clears throat> and we can use uh, this dot, uh, let's say strength, uh, strength, there we go, equals, <clears throat> I don't know, 10? 10? I don't know. It's a unitless value here. Uh, if I hit run, though, you'll see we get this error. This is not defined. And this is where uh, another new uh, keyword, I guess not new keyword, a new function comes into play. So inside of all of our classes, uh, in order to override the existing method, or in our case, in order to add on to the properties, we first need to call this special function super. And what super effectively does is it goes ahead and calls the super constructor. So that's going to be this constructor here, applies all of those properties, and then allows us to apply our new property so that we're able to override it. And the this keyword uh, will not be defined inside of an extended class uh, before we do this. So we can't access it until we do this uh, uh, super call. So, uh, one more thing I'd like to talk about is this idea of static methods. Uh, there is a new keyword uh, called static that allows us to create methods that are, um, well, static. When you have a class, you have to instantiate a new uh, instance of that class in order to use a method. Uh, but sometimes you want to just uh, get some data or access the class and get some information. So, uh, for example, on the human one, let's add a, a, a new method called say hello. So we can start with this key, new keyword static. We can do something like this. Say hello, and let's just say at console.logs, uh, hi there. Actually, instead of console log, let's, uh, let's return it. Do, 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 do. There we go. So the idea here is that we don't have to, and I'm just going to delete those there, we don't have to instantiate a new human object to use the static method. We can just use the static method. Uh, so it's really great. So we can just do something like console.log human dot say hello. Did I do? I did not do a capital S, but I just did something like that. And if we hit run, we should see, hi there. So this is really cool. So for example, if I tried to say human.walk, and I hit run, it's gonna give us an error. Walk is not a function because we haven't uh, instantiated a new object, so it doesn't know about walk yet. But with a static method, we can go ahead and do that. And the great thing about static, uh, the static keyword is that we can actually use uh, the get and set uh, from objects, um, uh, the get and set keyword. So if you've never seen this, for example, if I do something like this, static get uh, say hello, uh, instead of calling the function, I can kind of uh, create a method that when I just call it like such, will actually always return whatever is in there. So I could actually, instead of having to call it, I could set this up uh, maybe to do some other things and then return it for me. Um, 
really quite neat. And I'm going to do a video on uh, objects coming up really soon. And even though the get and set keywords are not ES6, uh, they are something to think about. And I'm going to show them really quickly because uh, in another upcoming video on proxies, we'll take a look at um, how we can use proxies to sort of intercept property lookups and stuff like that. So that's really cool. Well, uh, that's it for now. Uh, I hope you've learned something. Again, uh, kind of a lot of opinions around classes out there. Uh, the idea of classes, I heard a really uh, nice example or, or kind of, um, so what I'm looking for here, a nice uh, explanation of this, I think by Kyle Simpson, where he said, uh, the class keyword is kind of just like codifying the constructor pattern, the constructor pattern being that, uh, or codifying, codifying, I can never say that one properly, but the constructor pattern being, pattern being where we say we create a function plane and then we use the new keyword. The new keyword, that function is uh, a constructor function. We are constructing it. Um, but now in classes, we have the constructor function and we have this stuff. Uh, um, uh, that allows us to do it. And it's really syntax that's uh, satisfying the learning for people who are coming to it from another language who are craving those classes. I think the great thing about JavaScript is uh, it has so much flexibility in terms of what you can do that you don't have to to do these things. Uh, I did pull up here. I just wanted to point out again, uh, if you have not checked out letslearnes6.com, please do that. Uh, I'm going to be writing a book. It's going to be released fairly soon. What I'm going to do is I'll do like a an early release. So it'll be kind of like the uh, rough edit. Uh, some chapters might not be done yet, but I want to start getting it out there. Um, uh, before it's too late, I think. Uh, so head over to letslearnes6.com, sign up uh, to receive, or sign up to the email list so that you can receive uh, information once you get it. Uh, also head over to, uh, well, you're on the same page, but down below, make sure you check out, you can see all the things I've been looking at here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. You can see down below, uh, if you're looking at one of these videos, uh, a subscribe button. Please subscribe below uh, so that you can be up to date whenever a new video comes out. Uh, other than that, uh, I hope you've learned something, and uh, I'll catch you next time. See ya!